marking the game's biggest upgrade since its launch, Crytek's online FPS, Hunt Showdown 1896, is retooled and even retitled for today's hardware. Fundamentally, the game migrates to CryEngine 5.11 here, complete with a suite of visual upgrades, DirectX 12 support, and most crucially, a release for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and S. At last, this means that on console we get real-time lighting via Sfogi, standing for sparse voxel octree global illumination, in an enhanced form that allows both diffuse lighting and a simulation of light across rougher, specular materials. We get improved hair rendering. Noticeably in the game's loadout menu, we have support for popular upscaling technologies like AMD's FSR and Nvidia's DLSS, where FSR 2 in particular is used on console. Plus, in the upgrade to PS5, Series X and S in focus today, we get a 60 frames per second target this time. Double that of the 30 FPS, of course, on all last gen PS4 and Xbox One machines. So the questions here are quite simple. What's the state of this latest CryEngine effort on today's best consoles? How do these three versions compare? And how successfully does each one hit a stable 60 FPS? Let's find out. To the comparisons, and first, let's check out the resolution setups for each console. Hunt Showdown 1896 uses a fixed resolution target on all platforms, with no dynamic scaling involved. It's much like the last gen console releases in that sense. To hit a higher 60fps goal though, the targets for resolution do change on current gen machines. On Series X we have 1440p as the set internal target, which is then scaled up to 4K using AMD's FSR2. Next, PS5 renders at a lower resolution of 1260p, again using FSR2 for a 4K upscale. And finally, Series S pushes a native 864p image here, resulting in another step down in overall image clarity. For Series S, it's worth stressing that FSR2 is only able to do so much to resolve a higher resolution final frame from an 864p base. Given the huge scale of Hunt Showdown's maps, there are moments where distant sub-pixel detail like on the barbed wire of these fences here are only really visible at a close range on Series S gets close enough and that detail starts to materialise. Also, the fact that DRS isn't currently used on any machine here does have some bearing on performance, notably on Series X, which does struggle to support all its new CryEngine features at that fixed 1440p. More on that in a moment. In terms of their core visual settings, these three machines show some key differences. The game deploys matching shadow quality for all three, and likewise, SSR runs at an equivalent resolution on each, with cube mapping used as a fallback measure for reflections. Now, often we see PS5 and Series X are a settings match, but there is one curious omission on PS5 this time, in that volumetric effects are missing on Sony's console. Even Series S has these enabled, where it's hard to miss these long streaks of light piercing through the cracks of barns, alighting the dust in the centre, all of which is present on both Xbox consoles. In all likelihood, this is a bug on PS5, an oversight on Crytek's part to keep it enabled. And in fairness, lens flares and soft light shafts are engaged on PS5, though these heavy volumetric effects at the centre of interiors are clearly chopped out for the scene. For better or worse, in frame rate performance, it's a missing feature for now. Also, the brightness level on PS5 in particular is much too dark by default, and does need adjusting to be able to see anything at night. Otherwise though, and besides the missing volumetric effects, the gamma difference, and the different resolutions, 1260p versus 1440p, PS5 and Series X are a match in core settings. Looking to Series S next, the 4 teraflop console takes a few more cutbacks. Besides the drop to 864p, we're also seeing dropped texture quality, lower grade assets across the ground, weaponry and objects in each room. Anisotropic filtering is dropped to setting as well, and it's also noticed that parallax occlusion mapping, 
the three-dimensional juts to these mud tracks on the floor on Series X are paired back on Series S. The result is a flatter terrain ahead of this swamp area on Series S with less definition overall. The volumetric lighting, you might have noticed, is also reduced in resolution compared to the 12 teraflop machine. Beyond that, Series S also drops the draw distance setting for upcoming foliage, and so in this walk ahead, zoomed in, you'll notice more elements popping in. Finally, we also see the quality of alpha transparencies, especially for fire, are dropped to setting. On the whole though, it does still hold up well by comparison, and many of these drop settings are hidden by the fact that it's viewed through a lower resolution window. Moving on to performance, Hunt Showdown 1896 targets 60 frames per second on all three consoles. There's no mode toggle in this case, no optional 30fps fidelity mode as is the trend, you get one way to play. The hope then is that a concerted push for one mode yields a more tightly optimized experience except looking at Series X, that's not quite the case. Series X is the worst performer of the three overall. You do get to 60fps most of the time, but it's punctuated by clear, obvious drops during play. Firstly, at times when switching to the Dark Sight Vision mode, a major game mechanic used to track down clues and enemies, you'll incur a momentary blip. A cluster of frames are dropped in each transition between view mode, essentially, similar to what we saw on last gen consoles. More glaring still though is that while looking directly at a target while in Dark Sight view, you'll notice heavy drops on Series X with lurches down to the 45 to 60 FPS range. The erratic frame time and repeat pattern of drops here do point to a potential CPU bottleneck, given that extra world detail is suddenly rendered through walls. It's a shame to see such an easy way to trigger drops, given that using Dark Sight is crucial to victory. A VRR display will of course help to perceptually smooth out these drops, given that they rarely go below 45 FPS, but that's not a luxury available to everyone. Likewise, Series X has issues in general open field play. Long views over huge terrain, like swamps or the mills, will at times incur a drop into the 50s. And indeed, anything involving complex settlements is a trigger. It's not always the case, and typically it will hold at 60 FPS, but drops happen often enough to distract. Even scoping with a long range rifle, quickly zooming in and out again across the map, cues a sudden drop as the renderer adjusts, to draw in more detail. And finally, sudden bursts of alpha effects, like fire, blood or swarms of insects, will drop Series X into the 50 to 60 FPS region as well. Again, VRR will save the day for this range of frame rate, but for those without, the machine is clearly struggling against the characteristics of the engine. It's worth noting that in every case where there's a drop, also expect some screen tearing right at the top of the display on both Xbox consoles. Next along, we have the PS5 version. The drop from Xbox Series X's 1440p native resolution to a lesser 1260p is a factor in performance here, as is potentially the missing volumetrics. First up, it's worth saying that the dark sight view no longer shows erratic drops to the high 40s as we see on Series X. Rather, PS5, in the exact same scenario during this tutorial, often runs at a plain 60fps. Already then, we're at an advantage, Jumping in and out of this view incurs fewer drops on Sony's machine, and where they do appear, they're less drastic. Now, it's not a perfect delivery by any means, and I've spotted instances where PS5 still drops when stood right next to a target or a clue in dark sight mode, down to the 50fps line with a similar wild frame time reading as we saw on Series X. Still, in more cases than not, it's a night and day difference in PS5's favour. Next along, there's the broad long views of swamps and outposts, and in this matching shot, PS5 again clears this route at a clean 60fps, where Series X dropped to 55fps. This general trend of performance bears out in regular action as well. The one point where PS5 suffers though is in facing heavy alpha effects like fire, where again we see drops to the mid 50s are very much possible here, and unfortunately, PS5 also has screen tearing run up and down the entire display, unlike Xbox consoles which constrained the tearing to the top 20% of the frame. 
In summary then, PS5 runs at a lower resolution, it potentially has more visible tearing, but it's less prone to frame rate drops and hitches overall. Last up is the Xbox Series S. The lower native resolution, the reduced draw distances, texture quality, parallax occlusion maps, alpha effects, and volumetrics all amount to a version that surprisingly runs better than the more powerful Series X. It almost overcompensates in this respect with drop settings here. For example, this walk through fire now runs at a clean 60 frames per second, unlike both PS5 and Series X, which drop into the 50s. It's a good start, and generally speaking, any collision with explosive barrels will produce fewer drops on Series S in general play. Where Series S does seem to struggle though, is in handling complex open scenery, and yes, the dark side view. Again, we're seeing this run into the swamps drop us to an equivalent 50 to 60 FPS range as on Series X. Generally, it will settle at the 60 FPS line once you reach the center of an area, but it's entirely dependent on your position and view within the map. In a similar vein, the dark sight view will produce drops to 50 FPS while near a target. Slightly better than Series X, but some distance from PS5's smoother performance. On balance, Series S has its own pros and cons. The drop settings for alpha effects qualify it for better frame rates around FX heavy action, which is an advantage over PS5 and Series X. But it still has similar issues with rendering complex scenes from afar. On balance, Hunt Showdown 1896's reinvention for current gen machines is a mixed bag. It's a shame to see the frequency of frame rate drops below 60 given the time it's been in development. VRR support might be just the thing to save Xbox Series X in particular, though Series S and PS5 will benefit in different scenarios from that as well. Still, it's a surprise that, for all the new features added with CryEngine 5.11 and with the move to much more powerful hardware, a locked 60fps simply isn't in view here. Still, despite the shortfalls on console we're seeing today, it's encouraging to see the team supporting the game and the community that's grown around it all these years later. With that in mind, I really do hope that Crytek is able to keep pushing here and eventually tighten up the results we're seeing. But that's all from me today. If you did find this analysis useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video and many more, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. And to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But from me for now, thanks for watching.